do you want to start with Chase and uh, just what you think on the, on the signing and what yeah. does for the defense? Yeah. Um, look, I think um, he was a guy that we were looking at that, look, I don't know that I really knew that he was going to be available. Um, and and then we quickly found out that you know he was going to be available and he was going to be in a range that we felt like uh, you know we we could get to. Um, I think he's extremely talented. I think he's extremely motivated. We had a great visit with him. Um, had dinner with him the night before. Then brought him over. Obviously did all the medical. And I just think he's going to be a really good asset you know for our defense. Uh, Dennis, off topic of Bill Snyder, Ronald Curry, the question of Josh Allen. What kind of, what was he like to work with, and what did he make his players better? Yeah, look, I mean, um, he did a great job with our quarterbacks. Uh, he also coached the receivers in New Orleans. Um, you know, he's a he's a he's a great worker, extremely smart, uh, competitive. Um, I think you know, with him and, and and Joe Brady together, I think they'll do a hell of a job. But to be able to chase any concerns, I mean, when you guys learn of the injury, that you, you feel like you're Yeah, look, be I mean, you know, obviously, you know, we, we knew that, um, you know, he was going to have this surgery. Um, and I think the good thing for, for all of us involved was um, everybody that we talked to felt like, look, it's not a matter of if he's going to um, heal and and be fine. Uh, it was just a matter of when, uh, and so um, you know I think we're kind of comfortable with the timelines that we have. And yet, you know, it's a human body; it's going to heal at its own rate. But I know he's going to do everything he can to get himself back and get himself ready as quickly as possible. You uh, you did get you know your offense with the coaches, Clint, Rico, and. Clancy Barone, the Gary Kubiak yeah. offense. Yeah. What, what sold you on wanting to go to that, you know, full in on that? Yeah, look, I, um, obviously I think that that system of offense, uh, there's certainly a lot of variations of it. They're not all the same. Yeah. Uh, but I think that system uh, is something that I think's done really well in our league and done well in our league for a long period of time. Yeah. Um, and, and I think it's something that I think we can incorporate and I think we have the type of players that uh, fit well in that system and so uh, like I said there's a lot of variations to it uh, and I, look I've known the Kubiak family since you know at least the early 90s when I was playing at A&M and Gary coached there um, and I remember watching Gary play when I was growing up you know as, a, as an A&M fan growing up so I feel like I've kind of known you know that family a little bit, and, and uh, Clint's a guy I've kind of followed his career a little bit, and, and um, felt like it was a good fit for you know what we wanted to do. As um, uh, Pete, I talked to you about bringing Taysom with them to, to Denver. No, that cop, that uh, conversation has not been broached. I'm look. I feel like Sean's tried to get everybody else from yeah. from the Saints to go to Denver with him, so. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> Dennis, what is the team gaining in Willie Gay Jr.? What do you like about signing him? Yeah, look, um, <clears throat> big, physical, athletic linebacker. Um, going to bring a ton of energy. Um, going to be great for the locker room. Uh, you know, obviously I don't, I don't know him personally, uh, but Todd Grantham coached him at, at you know, Mississippi State, and, and so I feel like we're getting a – Really big, fast, athletic linebacker, and a guy that's going to be really good in our locker room. Did uh, Janoko share any insight, like on Peterman behind the scenes? Were there things that, like, he knew from Chicago, like just as far as the meeting room? That was yeah, like, a major benefit. Yeah, for the team? yeah. I mean, look, I think anytime you you have experience with somebody, um, you know, it, it it's a benefit to you because you don't really know when you're bringing somebody into your program, you don't really know exactly what you're getting. Um, until you actually get a chance to get them in your building and, and start working with them. And so anytime you have somebody that's got some inside knowledge that's been in the meeting room with somebody, I think that's beneficial. And, and um, look, I think there's a connection there with uh, 
uh, Andrew working with him in Chicago. There's obviously the connection that he was in the quarterback room with Derek, uh, you know, in Vegas. And so I think that's, um, you know, going to going to benefit us. And I think that's going to be helpful for Derek. Hey, when you when you're comfortable with what Clint's going to bring to the offense, what, what are you expecting him to bring? And yeah, well, look, I mean, I think just from a schematic standpoint. Um, you know, th this whole offense is going to be based on, you know, kind of the run, play action um, game. I mean, obviously, you know, drop back is going to be going to be a part of it. Uh, but you know, the, the the main emphasis is going to be able to be able to run the ball, run the ball effectively, uh, and then be able to create some some shot plays in the passing game off the play action. So I think that's uh, uh, something that we can use. I mean, look, you know. Clint and uh, Rico, John Benton, like these guys have been together before. Uh, so I think there's some continuity in terms of getting getting the program, you know, off the ground and getting started. With Chase, in Washington, like sometimes I felt like maybe his stutter step was like kind of wanted him to be more of a pad, like a, a power rusher. Is, are, are there things that you look at when like you look at his game that you would like to see him rush? Uh, a certain way or that you feel like is maybe placed to his advantage? Yeah, look, here, when I put the tape on and watched him play, here's what I noticed. I noticed he won one-on-one -on -one matchups. Um, and I think that's something that we need to be better at um, this year. Now, there's a lot of different ways that you can do that. You can win with speed, you can win with power, you can win with a counter. Uh, there's a lot of ways that you can do that. but. Yeah, I just feel like there's there's a there's a really good athlete there, um, and I think there's some things that we can help him, you know, be better at, um, and and help him in his career. And there's certainly things that I think he can do that's going to help our defense. Yeah, I think that's kind of what's interesting. As, as much focus as there's been on the injuries, it seems like he's still kind of a developing player in terms of just his potential. Like what you kind of see there. Well, look, here's another guy that. Um, you know, came in, he was the defensive rookie of the year. Um, and then he basically missed two seasons due to injury. Um, and then came back this season. He started off, you know, really kind of on fire there in, in, in Washington um, and, and was having a lot of success, got traded at the, at the trade deadline. Um, I think he was credited with the sack in the uh, Super Bowl. and. Um, I think he was involved in the intentional grounding, which, you know, in my mind, was like two sacks in the Super Bowl. So uh, I do think this is still a young, developing player, um, which is, you know, exciting for me. Do you see on film the neck at all bother him, or could you tell that it, like, yeah, look, I, his game? Um, I think he would tell you that there were certain things that he didn't feel comfortable being able to do. Um, and, and, and again, I think the, the good thing for for us and for him is that, you know, when we, when we visit with the doctors, um, you know, everybody, you know, feels like once this, like this problem is going to be corrected and, um, and once it's corrected, there won't be any issue. Did you guys consider bringing Pete back or does Ollie kind of fill that role that he was in uh, last year? Yeah, I think, I think all things are on the table in terms of how we want to, you know, fill out our, our roster. And so, you know, there's a business aspect that goes along with all of these, you know, decisions. And so, um, yeah, we'll see. With Chase, do you feel like the defensive line comes down subtle, or is that maybe a still position you put you in the draft? Well, I think this, um, and I said this yesterday. I think any time you affect the quarterback, whether it's offensively, uh, by being able to protect the quarterback or being a weapon for the quarterback, defensively being able to rush the quarterback, being able to defend the, the pass. Uh, those are those are areas that you're always looking to improve. So I don't think you can ever have enough good corners in your building. I don't think you can ever have enough pass rush. How do you feel about your receiver depth right now? We know about the two guys, obviously, with Rashid and, and Chris. It looks like AT is an emerging guy and besides Stanley and Cedric, but how do you feel about your depth in that room right now? Yeah, um, 
I feel like the addition of, of you know, in particular, Cedric Wilson uh, gives us a little bit of a veteran presence, somebody that's you know kind of been there, done that. Uh, <clears throat> so I thought that was a, a good piece. I certainly think that's some an area, you know, in terms of a pass catcher, uh, not necessarily a wide receiver, but a pass catcher. Um, is, is something that we're going to, you know, continue to look at, and uh, I feel better about our depth now than I did a month ago, you know. But uh, uh, yeah, but I think that's still probably a position that we're, we'll, we'll look to see if we can't find somebody to add. When you look at the wide receiver depth, just bringing in Coach Williams, just kind of what is he able to bring to a room that's kind of a little bit younger? Yeah, look, um, I'm excited about Dub. Um, I, I just think, you know, his demeanor um, is is going to be something that we need, you know, in that room. Um, he's going to be tough on them. He's going to be demanding of them, uh, and yet he understands how to relate to them. Um, and so I'm 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 kind of excited about watching that dynamic and see how that uh, that plays out. Um, but I, but I think he's going to be good for that room. You guys, when you guys aren't winning the one-on-ones, this is probably kind of obvious. But uh, like, how, how does that handcuff you as far as like how you can design defense or things like that? Like, does it open things up? With well, yeah. I mean, look, being able to win one-on-one matchups where everything doesn't have to be scheme-related, um, I think that yeah, it, it it makes it easier to to, to call call defenses, design defenses, because you're not having to uh, scheme everything up. You're, you're, you're able to, uh, you know, win on, on some, you know, natural ability uh, whether, rather than having to, you know, win with, with schematics all the time. And just besides getting healthy, what, is, what does Foskey need to do to kind of be, a, you know, ready to contribute? I think number one, he's got to cut it loose. You know, I think this last year, um, you know, was a was a big learning year for him, um, and, and so my hope is that he has a great off season. He's able to spend, you know, he, he understands what we're what we're doing defensively, and so he's less concerned about you know learning the defense, and he's able to just go cut it loose and go play. And I think that's uh, that's what I'm looking to see. Now it's going to be a while before we can actually see that happen. You're not seeing it, you know, really. As you go through OTAs and minicamp, um, but I think that's that's just part of the process. But I really want to see him kind of cut it loose. And do you guys feel good with Cowden in that spot next to Tyron, or is that maybe still a need or something that you're looking to? Well, look, and I think it's still going to be something that we're going to be looking at. Um, you know, I think you know when you really look at you know, Tyron Matthew is is kind of a proven commodity back back there. Um, you know, and then look, we just brought Jonathan Abram back. Um, Howden was a, a young player that we felt like did some good things, um, and yet, you know, I don't think any of us are ready to just hand the position over to him. I think that's something that's got to be earned. Do you see Billy Gay as primary kind of in that Zach Bond role, or is he maybe? Yeah, I know you believe in a bunch of different. Well, players. look, I, I think he's a guy that's going to be competing. Um, to be a starter on our defense. Um, and so I think that, you know, with, with bringing him on board, you know, you have, you have Willie, uh, you have DeMario, you have Pete Warner. Those are three guys that I know, you know, played a lot of football in our league uh, and played at a high level in our league. And I think um, that gives us a little bit more depth and it gives us some more options and things that we can do. He was very vocal of like, I want more playing time. Yeah. And, but he, he actually kind of looking at snaps, he played a lot in Kansas City. Like, it, yeah. I guess, did you kind of like that urgency from him of wanting to earn it? Here, yeah. Uh, here's what I what I really appreciated was, um, you know, there was no expectation on his part that he's going to be coming in here and handed a job. Um, and yet there's no expectation that he's just going to come in and, and, and be a backup necessarily either. So, um, you know, he's excited about the opportunity to come in and compete. Um, he wants that opportunity, and, uh, and we're going to give him the opportunity. And, and look, that, that, that stuff will play out 
um, you know, throughout the course of you know OTAs, mini camp, training camp, preseason games, and then we'll evaluate where we're at. And uh, the cool thing is, is we got enough good football players. We'll find ways to utilize them and, and, and get them active and, and, and get them, uh, you know, being productive for us. Along those same lines, like when you're talking about the opportunity to compete, uh, is this offseason kind of set up for Jake Hayner to maybe seize that backup job behind Derek? Or I forget yeah, well, look, I, I mean, I think um, as we sit here right now, um, you know, we let him and Nate Peterman go battle it out and, and uh, uh, see where we're at. But uh, look, he's another one of these young guys that we felt good about, you know, throughout the preseason last year um, would be, you know, obviously with, with, the, with the new offensive system, everybody's going to be learning, so everybody's going to kind of be starting, you know, at the, at the same level. Uh, and, and so, yeah, we're excited about watching him go out and compete and see what he can do, and, and uh, yeah, we'll see. How do you guys view Nick Salterberry just coming into your team? Golly, I feel like I'm, I keep repeating myself, yeah. you know, with the same stuff. Because here, here's another young guy that we feel optimistic about, but we really don't know a lot about. Um, and so, uh, but but you know, we're, we're anxious to see him get out there and, 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 and get to work and see what he can do. I mean, look, when we drafted him, we drafted him as a kid that we could bring in. Develop and ultimately, our, our our vision would have been for him to develop into a starting guard. Um, and so, we'll see how quickly we can make that vision come to life. How, how well has this team kind of weathered what you knew would be a tough month before free agency, getting under the cap um, in terms of just what you had to lose versus what you thought you might have lost in this process? Um, yeah, look, I, I like where we're at as a football team right now. Um, you know, I, I certainly feel like there's some things that we still need to, to address, um, and yet we got plenty of time to do that, uh, and plenty of avenues to do that. Um, you know, with the draft coming up, uh, you know, in about a month here, uh, I think there's some some things that we can we can address through the draft. There's always going to be another wave of, of guys that become available through free agency. You know, after the draft, uh, really all the way up and up and into training camp. You know, there's avenues that we can utilize to, you know, fill some spots in the roster. So, um, I think I think Mickey, Kai, those guys, they do a great job managing the cap. Um, certainly, the cap going up like it did this year helped us, um, but it, it went up the same for everybody. So everybody got the same same benefit. So. Yeah, we're just, you know, we're in that stage of the offseason where you're continuing to try to, you know, add some personnel pieces to your team to try to see if you can improve. Yeah. For Cedric Wilson, do you think, I know you can play on the outside and, and the inside, but do you see one that's maybe more advantageous for him? Um, no, not necessarily. Look, I think the cool thing about, you know, this offense is, is um, you know, all these guys can play in all the different positions. You know, um, when you think about you know the receiver position, typically you've got hey, here's our C, here's our X, here's our F, um, and as you, you you put them on and you draw the diagrams, the Z goes to the tight end side, the X goes to the open side, and the F goes in the slot, uh, and yet those positions can line up anywhere on the field. And, and I think that's, um, I think that's what's going to be cool about this offseason is just watching, you know, how we can put those guys in different positions and how we can utilize all those guys in different in different ways. Tyron went on that recruiting dinner with uh, Chase Young. You guys, is that something you guys normally do? Do you normally bring a player to, to one of those, or is uh, that unique? Yeah, I, I would say I would say it probably doesn't happen every time. Um, but I thought, you know, and, and we thought that, you know, we thought this was a unique situation. And, and uh, I think nobody sells our program better than our players. Um, and, and in particular, guys that have been to a 
couple of different spots. Um, because when you've only been in one spot, you only know how it's done in one place. But when you've been in a few different organizations and seen it done a couple of different ways, um, well, you certainly understand how, how good you have it when you're, when you're here. Um, and so, uh, yeah, and I thought Tyron was, was great in, in, in that environment. Um, you know, it wasn't like this big rah-rah, you know, type of, you know, deal. It was, it was uh, you know, kind of, you know, real professional and, and, and to the point. And um, I thought he did a good job for us. Dennis, as you go through the pre-draft process, have you seen any effects from NIL as far as uh, dealing players or any experience with them from there? You know, um, well, I don't know that I've necessarily seen, you know, anything uh, overly unique in, in, in that that I can tie directly to, right. you know, NIL. Um, I, I certainly think that, you know, there's some, there's some differences that I'm seeing right now in terms of, you know, guys that are choosing not to work out at the combine, choosing not to do some of the things at the combine or not working out at their pro days. I don't know if I can tie that directly to NIL, but I certainly think there's a little bit more of that showing up now. And just working with, with Clinton on this for a few weeks now, what's kind of set out just about that staff and how's that process going so far? Yeah, look, I, um, I think really kind of the attention to detail, uh, and, and yet we haven't started working with the players at all, you know. But I, I just think just really the, the attention to detail and everything that they're doing in terms of, you know, how we want to be able to, you know, install the offense, uh, exactly what we want to do, what are the techniques that we're going to use to teach. I think that's probably the, the biggest thing. Um, that, that, that I'm noticing, and, and look, we'll 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 we'll, uh, we'll kind of refine refine the process as we as we go along. But I'm, I'm kind of anxious to you know get the players in, get an opportunity to start meeting with them, and uh, and see how they uh, you know take to the new the new staff. And, and really, no different than when you bring players into your building. You don't really know exactly what you have until you really start working with them. So I'm anxious to watch these guys coach, um, you know, and, and, and see, you know, what their personalities are as they start working with our players. It, it seems like over the last couple of years, you guys have done a really good job of bringing in like cheaper league minimum players and getting them to contribute and play well. Just what's kind of been the behind the success of, of that for you guys? I think that's what coaching's really about. You know, um, I, I think it, when you when you have um, great players, um, but they all want to be coached and they all want to be held accountable. Um, but great players sometimes can make plays that, you know, you're not really coaching how to do that, you know. Um, and so it's, it's, it's finding guys later in the draft. It's finding guys that, um, you know, are, are lower level, from a from a financial standpoint, um, you know, through free agency and finding guys that you think fit um, the things that you want to be able to do, and then our ability to go and coach them and, and and develop them within our scheme. And I think that's what really what coaching is all about. Was Cam Jordan's ankle injury something that, or is Cam Jordan's ankle? Um, no, I don't think it's going to be anything that's going to keep him out of the spring. Um, I do think this. I do think when when you have uh, a guy like Cam who's getting a little older, um, you know, how much do we do with him in the spring? Um, how much do we do with him in training camp? I, I think those are all. You know things that you kind of take into account when you're dealing with, you know, a more veteran player. You mentioned before that you kind of talked to Derek a little bit on the process with bringing Clint on. What do you think he's going to benefit the most in his, this offense in going into year two? Um, yeah, look, I think you know the interesting thing is is uh, you know 
David played for Gary in Houston. Um, and when I talked to, to uh, Derek initially, you know, and said, hey, look, this is you know, something I'm looking at. Um, you know, he called his brother, and I was, I was a little nervous that it might not be the, uh, you know, because that was, that was David's last year in Houston, but David was very complimentary of Gary, very complimentary of the scheme, um, which I think, you know, really got Derek excited. Uh, but I think, you know, Derek probably didn't get enough credit for the athlete that he, that he is, um, and, and I think his athletic skill set uh, will do well in this, in this, in this scheme. You know, I think some of the things that we, we did kind of later on in the, in the season last year with some of the play-action passing game uh, benefited Derek. I thought our passing game kind of came alive a little bit towards the end of the year, and, and, and I think that's something that uh, he'll thrive in uh, in, in this new, new system, new scheme. What's the, uh, what's the importance of the tight end in the scheme, or is that maybe change from place to place, or is it, is it essential to kind of have you know, that two-way play? Yeah, look, I mean, um, I think having some versatility is what I what I really think is important in this. Really, not not just not just this offensive scheme, but really any offensive scheme. And so, um, yeah, tight ends that, that can block in the running game, obviously, uh, are, are are important pieces in, in in what we want to try to be able to do. Uh, but also, guys that can can. Uh, Get open and affect the game in the in, in the passing game, and so um, yeah, I think I, I wouldn't. I don't know that I would say okay. This this offensive scheme, the tight end is more important or less important. Um, you know, but I think having some versatility, I think is is is, uh, is something that we're looking for. Coach, I know that you've been asked to apologize, but can you tell me about Ronald Curry and what the Bills are getting out of the coach? Yeah, look, I mean, they're they're getting a guy that's going to come in and. and, and work hard and he's got experience with Joe Brady so I think that's uh, you know kind of cool um, he's smart uh, he has great demeanor with the players um, yeah I think he's I think he's gonna do a great job coming in there he's gonna he's gonna provide a lot of uh, leadership for, for that room thank you yeah Dennis what do you hope that John Benton is gonna be able to do with the offensive line with the part of bringing Clint on yeah, well, I, I think I think you know, really, him and Rico together. I, I think I think the scheme's going to benefit. Um, you know, our guys up up front. Um, but yeah, I think I think, and and I think there's 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 a demeanor to the way in which we want to play offense, um, and and uh, there's going to be a physicality uh, with which we're going to. You know, have our guys playing, and uh, I think it's going to be cool to see. Jerry Sneed went for a third round pick a few years ago. Jalen Ramsey went for a third. It seems low from the outside, at least from our perspective. Like, has the league's evaluation on like cornerbacks or at least trading for them kind of changed the last few years here? Or um, well, look, I can't I can't speak for the league. Sure. Um, you know, I know, I know the way that we play defense. Um, that, that's, that that's a position that's highly valued, um, and and so, um, yeah, I, that's a hard question because I, I can't I can't talk for the league. I know I know that we value that position, and 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 I know how that affects our ability to play defense the way that we want to be able to play defense. So. Yeah, I, I think it still remains to be seen. You know what I mean? Um, so, yeah, I, 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 I don't, I don't, I don't feel. Um, you know, at the combine a few weeks ago, I was feeling a lot better about it, um, and yet I don't know that I'm seeing as much progress as I was hoping to see. You know, at this point, so. I think that still kind of remains to be seen. But here's the cool thing. We've got plenty of time. You know, no different than what we were talking about with with Cam and being a veteran player and, and uh, 
um, you know, probably not utilizing necessarily a lot during during this OTA and in uh, mini camp. You know, I would see the same thing, you know, with Ram too. So um, I think we're just going to have to wait and see how that all goes as we go through, you know, all the off season and and as we get into the training camp aspect. Is that something that could be a concern, maybe going into the season? About? Yeah, yeah, I think it could be. Um, but again, like we'll we'll just have to kind of wait and see. Is that like? Did you just not respond to that surgery as well as you guys had hoped, or what kind of what what caused you to change? Well, I, I think I think more more of it's just been visiting with him, and 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 he just isn't quite where I was probably hoping he'd be, uh, and 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 really quite frankly where where he was hoping he'd be. So, um, but again, there's a long time before we kick the ball off, so. I wouldn't jump to any any conclusions right now, but but you know we'll, we'll we'll see how it goes over the next you know three, four, five, six months, whatever that is, before we get to the season. Could he like potentially need like another procedure? Or I don't know that. I don't know. I don't. I, I, that that's not been something that we've really discussed. Uh, You out of bullets? We haven't asked technically. You asked them all yesterday. <laughs> uh, technically, we asked you about Marshawn at the combine. Anything different there, or any like? Do you have any more clarity about whether he might be on? I know he's under contract and everything. But. Yeah. No. Look. Um, really, nothing new to add there. I mean, you know, that's on our football team. He's a hell of a football player. Um, I'm excited about what I think he can do for us. Uh, the key for him, really, just like anybody, is can we can we get him in here and, and, and keep him healthy for an entire season? And uh, I think that's what our focus is right now. For the DN spots, like granderson has been a starter, Jordan's been a starter, Chase Young's been a starter. Like, do you see a competition unfolding there for those starting spots, or do you kind of have an idea in mind of like? Oh, look, I I think. I think as with any position we have, uh, you know, on our team, I think, I think, you know, guys are going to have to go out there and, 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 and earn it. Um, you know, so I'm excited about, you know, watching how this thing plays out. Um, and it's a good problem to have, like having guys that have played at a high level um, and performed and been productive in our league. You know, having having guys that have been able to do that on your team, I think, is is a good problem to have. For Chase too, sometimes like you would hear some criticisms of there was like this play in the NFC Championship game where he didn't did Gibbs on the backside like the, the effort. How how often does that show on film, or is that something you would like to see more corrected, or is that going to be a focus point well, for him here? I, I I would I would say um, it's never been really an issue on our defense. And, and so I wouldn't expect that to be an issue now. Um, you know, so our guys, you know, all of our guys are gonna, they're gonna play hard. They're gonna play the game the right way. And and, uh, and look, I obviously we, we brought Chase in here because I think he fits the culture of what we wanna do defensively. And so I'm excited about getting the opportunity to work with him. Oh, one last one for me since you're about a culture, but like we talked, you mentioned even with Willie Gay earlier about the locker room. Like, you feel like the guys that you brought in this off season have gone kind of toward the things you talked about at the end of last season of improving the culture. Yeah, I think I think yeah, I do. I think I think that's been something that we've we've really looked to. Um, I think, and Mickey and I have talked about this a lot. You know, everybody wants to win, um, and everybody's willing to do a lot of things to win. But are you really willing to do everything it takes to win? And and so uh, I think that's something that we, as we brought guys into our program, that that's something that we uh, we look for. All right, all good. Okay, appreciate it, guys.